Christina. And um, I'm feeling a little bit weird because I don't have such a thorough presentation as my Aunt Petya do, uh, but I'll do my best anyway. Uh, <laughs> and um, the first thing I wanted to tell you, uh, which I think is okay when we're talking about a book that is done by someone that is your friend and your comrade, is um, I was asking myself, and I actually asked George why he invited me to speak. And um, when I was reading through the introduction, um, he mentions that actually this idea of interviewing people and bringing these interviews together started in 2015 when I was here in Athens uh, covering for Jacobin and writing about the Greek situation for Jacobin and I asked George if we would together interview some of the young generation mainly of, of the Syriza leadership people that uh, assumed um, responsibilities in the new government. This was April 2015 and uh, this is mainly how it started and George mentions this in the introduction which I thought was very endearing for me um, and nice to know that uh, I was a part of this path that George uh, enrolled in. But also it's interesting that George said that these interviews are not in the book. <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, I think it's, it's, they're still online, you know, we didn't like totally erase them. I think it's still interesting to see how George started and I think it's, a, it's still an interesting uh, historical marker. Uh, they're still in, at Jacobin, <laughs> so <laughs> I invite you to go read them anyway. Um, and, then I, and then George invited me to talk about uh, the third chapter of the book, which is the chapter, and I read and I quote, Politically economies, political economies of the current global order, Eurozone, stagnant capitalism and beyond, which is like um, everything. And I was wondering why George invited me to talk about this part on political economy. And um, I, just, uh, I got just accepted in a political economy PhD program, so I thought it was because of that. But, I, you know, I just, I'm just going to start. I actually haven't started. But then George told me, no, no, it's fine. You know, you just say something about the EU and stuff. <laughs> So yeah, so that's what I want to say. I want to say something about the EU and stuff. Um, and so, but, but it does make sense because I have a, a couple of uh, remarks upon the book which it, are not critiques, but it's interesting to see uh, how George organized this book. Uh, in the introduction, he, um, he makes a thorough analysis about the contents and the, the authors or the, the interviewee, interviewees. Um, and he basically talks about them in different ways. On the, on the one hand, he talks about different political belongings, let's say, and he organizes people in accordance to different political backgrounds, traditions, belongings. Uh, then he goes on by trying to organize them into generational categories, so the millennial, the generation who are now in their 40s, 50s, who were uh, very active and have been leading roles during the anti-globalization um, uh, movements in the 90s, and then what he's called the generation of 68. So I was wondering why the book could not be organized also generationally. It also have been a question. Um, but he decided to organize it in topics. And I think it's hard to organize it in topics, especially when you're coming to a topic that is called political economy. Because, and the Eurozone, and stagnant capitalism and beyond. <laughs> because I was thinking, for example, the interview with Neil Davidson, which is called the National Question Class in the European Union, could totally be part of this topic as well. Or some of the work of Sarah Ferris about the political economy of the labor market and migrant fluxes could totally be part of a chapter of a topic of political economy. So it's complicated. But then when I actually got to read the chapter, um, I think there is, um, or this is what I saw at least, uh, or my understanding, there is an organizational line of debates, uh, and this is maybe why George then invited me to be here, um, which is about um, um, the, the new, old, new debates on the question of scales. So, uh, the new debates scales scale, national, subnational, national, European, international, the question of scales. Um, and the question of scales is, is, is today, I think, uh, a very central debate for the left, for one, especially for one very particular reason. Um, 
which we couldn't, uh, which I think the left in general couldn't deny anymore, which is after 2008 and the financial crisis, and then everything that came up with it, and particularly, and I think this is where also where our politicization became strongly uh, stronger, the crisis of uh, sovereign debts in Southern Europe, um, which had to do with the role of the states uh, and how states, the states, um, uh, contrary to a lot of uh, globalization theories from the 90s, became again seen f by political economists, but by the left in general, as a variable that we couldn't go away from anymore and that we had to deal with on both analyzing the structure in which production and reproduction is organized but also on the relations between different states and their positions in the world, but also, and this is where I think this part is very interesting, on the question of strategy. So where does the left stand today concerning states and its relation to states on how we develop left-wing progressive strategies? Um, and I think uh, the, the, the four interviews that George categorized in, in the political economies of the current global order, which are uh, one interview by Kostas Lapavitsas called The Future of Greece, another one called From War Economists to the War on Terror by Gareth Dale, um, one that is called Labor and Resistance in Asia by Kevin Gray, and another one which is called Order Liberalism and the Death of Liberal Democracy by Veda Bonfeld. Um, uh, although they, a lot of them do approach the question of the Euro and the Eurozone as a, and the Euro crisis as a very central question today for the left, there is, of course, the Kevin Gray interview, which is about Asia. But they all focus or they debate the question and the role of the state today. How, how, how does the state, what is the role of the state in a transnationalized global uh, capitalist system? And at the same time, what are, for the left, the new dilemmas and the new questions? So when we're talking about uh, borders or migration or... Um, or um, uh, internationalism, democracy, we are talking again about the role of the state. And I'm not going to give you your opinion, I'm just, I just want to go a little bit through. And when we're talking about the new questions of sovereignty, how do we talk about sovereignty without giving space to the far right and to nationalist impulses, uh, all these are, I think, and in my opinion, and for our generation, central questions, not only in terms of analysis, but mainly in terms of a strategic thinking. And I think in the end that's, that's what is interesting about this particular interviews is that they're not only broader analytical um, proposals, they are thinking about strategy. And by strategy I mean the understanding of what instruments, what paths and what subjects we need in order to build uh, or to transform uh, the relation of forces between capital and labor. So, this is what I had to say. I think, uh, go get the book. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I just want to make it short because there's still three other people.